the development of the naval submarine began in the Revolutionary War. Outgunned by Britain's huge naval superiority, the colonists desperately needed a weapon that could give them an advantage in the war at sea. A young Yale student, David Bushnell, would be the man to design the first offensive submarine in history. In the years prior to the revolution in 1776, Bushnell applied himself to the problem of underwater propulsion. But when war rocked North America, Bushnell had an opportunity to put his theories into practice. During the Revolutionary War, he decides that the cause of the Americans must be aided by creating something to combat the overwhelmingly powerful Royal Navy. Bushnell starts work on designing a submarine with the capability to attack the British at sea. But restricted by the technology of the day, he was faced with overcoming major problems. He was living in a time when there were no batteries, there were no engines, and it is, as you can see, a wooden hull uh, with a pilot who is also the engine room, who is also the fire control computer, uh, who is also the navigation system. It is powered by a foot-operated crank, driving this propeller at the front of the submarine. Vertical motion is controlled, firstly, by flooding water into this tank through this lever here, and then to surface again, there's a pump on each side to empty the ballast tank. None of this is very efficient. The maximum speed that this thing could achieve would probably be a lot less than one knot, so he was completely at the mercy of the tide or current in the river. Bushnell finalized his plans. With input from Benjamin Franklin, he built his craft and gave it a name, Turtle. Now he and his fellow patriots needed to select a suitable target. They had no difficulty in finding one. A major thorn in the colonists' side, the British fleet blockading New York Harbor. The plan was to attack the Royal Navy flagship, HMS Eagle, anchored near Staten Island. And the idea was quite simple, that a bomb could be attached to the bottom of HMS Eagle from the dived turtle using the auger with the rope coming to this watertight box inside which was a charge of gunpowder. The man chosen to be the first naval submariner in history was Sergeant Ezra Lee. On the night of September 6, 1776, Lee set off from the coast with HMS Eagle firmly in his sights. After hours of exhausting legwork, pumping the foot pedals that powered the front propeller, Lee was in striking distance of the enemy. Now for the second phase of the attack, to attach the explosives to the underside of HMS Eagle. Flooding the ballast tanks, Lee submerged. Once in position, he began the task of boring a hole into the HMS Eagle by hand, using the auger on the top of Turtle. But there's a problem. The screw will not bite, and his oxygen supplies are running dangerously low after hours of grueling work. The mission is now in serious jeopardy, and the colonists' hope of lifting the blockade hang in the balance. Unknown to Lee, the hull of HMS Eagle was clad with metal plates. Instead of drilling wood, Turtle's screw had just been grinding metal. The bottom of the ship was covered in copper plates to prevent the attack of the Torito worm, which also prevented the attack of the Turtle. Lee makes another attempt, but again he cannot penetrate the hull of HMS Eagle. With daylight fast approaching, Lee decides to abort the attack. Fortunately, is unable to get the screw that he wanted to use to implant the charge into the hull of the Eagle, and in the end has to give up detonating the charge on his way home and causing quite a stir in New York Harbor. Tactically, the mission had failed, but shaken by the threat of being attacked from underwater, the British lifted their blockade just as the colonists had hoped. The strategic victory they were looking for was won. With Turtle, Bushnell had signaled the shape of things to come. It's interesting to reflect that in this crude wooden barrel is everything that exists in a modern submarine. 
You have a system for propelling it. You have a system for diving and a system for surfacing. A system for controlling it while you're underway and perhaps most importantly, which makes it a weapon, something to deliver to make your effort worthwhile.